Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. The next lecture, lecture number 8, it is on selection of appropriate plant source for color extraction. Slowly now we are getting into the real knowledge of natural dyes, how these colors can be efficiently extracted from the plant or the animal source is what we will learn in this chapter or in this lecture. Effective extraction method, so far the primitive people did extract colorant, but they did not find an efficient method or effective method of extraction. Over a period of time with research and dedicated efforts to effectively extract the colorant, the research has come far more you know usefully available, so that the practitioners, the natural dye practitioners can actually extract the colorant from the natural plant sources. The use of natural dye is much safer and it is also that it is now made available, many new sources have come up and therefore, there should be some very good methods of extraction of colorants. So, whatever was the challenges or the shortcoming which the earlier people faced, research in this particular area has helped the artisans and the natural dye practitioners to extract the colorant fully from the plant part, so that most of the dye content can be extracted from the plant material, because this was one of the drawbacks in the earlier stages of extraction. That many a times the plant material still would have retained some of the colorants and the colorants of the natural dye were not fully extracted. So, a lot of dye was wasted because the extraction process was not effective. To overcome all those you know factors that how to extract most efficiently in cheap manner and most effectively retaining the color property is again a big challenge and research has really progressed in the area as you will see as we go along this lecture, that the extraction process has really taken up very advanced level. And so, we now try to look at the various methods of extraction of natural dyes. Methods of dye extraction, experimental trials were carried out in domestic gardens in collaboration with botanists, mainly focusing on the best condition for the growth of the dye plant in regard to soil and climatic conditions. Modern cultivation system for getting maximum dye yields including optimal seeding and harvesting time, optimal fertilization procedures and were also adapted for best irrigation and best agricultural practices. The utilization or the utilizable plant part were subjected to specific dehydration processes or the dye stuff was extracted as per the given strategy. So, either the plant was dried or the plant was subjected to an extraction process which is given in the next slide. So, this is how the flow chart goes, either the plant is dried or if it is fresh, then it is extracted by alcoholic extraction 
or some other ex solvent extraction or aqueous that means in water extraction is carried out. From the alcoholic extraction and any other solvent extraction mostly the solvent is evaporated and a semi solid extract is obtained. Whereas, from the aqueous extraction the water is removed 50 percent or sometimes even 75 percent and liquid dye is uh, obtained. From the solid extract of course, fractionation can be done and pure dyes can be obtained if, if we are trying to do the structure elucidation. If it is a new dye source then we need to know what are the dye molecules in that. So, that is a different uh, set of reactions and uh, strategies that we need to adopt, but right now we are concentrating on an efficient method of extraction. So, both dried plant part and fresh plant parts can be used for extraction by three different methods alcoholic extraction, any other solvent like acetone, ether or even sometimes hexane or we can use water and that was one of the first methods that were used by primitive people for extraction. Solid extracts could be obtained or liquid dyes could be obtained and then one could do dyeing accordingly using these extracts. Conventional mode of extraction, then during the extraction there can be an alcoholic extraction, any other solvent extraction or water extraction which is also known as aqueous extraction. So, three types of extractions are possible. One is in the methanol extraction, the second one is any other solvent like hexane or acetone or ethyl acetate can be used and the third one is of course, the conventional water extraction which is primarily used by the primitive people for the extraction of natural dyes. Now, from these extractants of the alcoholic type or any other solvent type, this solvent can be evaporated on a rotary evaporator and collected for next use and solid extract or semi solid extract or paste extract can be obtained. Similarly, from the aqueous extract liquid dyes can be extracted by removal of water. So, by gradual removal of water it can be concentrated. The only problem in the aqueous extraction is that when we overheat it some of the dye molecules may get degraded due to overheating. So, we have to take care that we do not exceed the temperature above 95 to 100 degrees, so that only the water boils and it does not affect the dye molecule. Solvents usually that are used for extraction can be methanol, ethanol, acetone, ether and so extraction of colorant can take place from the dye dried part or fresh part be it flower, be it fruit, be it leaf, be it stem, be it bark or roots or all these parts of the natural plant can be used for extracting dyes. So, it is not that one can only use flowers for methanol extraction or one can use only water for bark extraction, one can that flexibility is there but one has to see in uh, make a trial to see whether any colorant is coming in that solvent or not by dipping the plant in a small beaker and seeing if the color is getting into the solvent then it is an appropriate solvent so there is no hard and fast rule for using one particular solvent only and three types of extractions are possible as I mentioned earlier, but among that methanol is considered as a very good solvent for all types of polar, non-polar molecules 
which are present in the dye content of the plant. But other solvents can also play a very good role. For example, which are non-polar colorants will be extracted very well in hexane. Colors which are polar can be extracted in, the, in ethyl acetate or acetone or methanol or ethanol. And of course, water becomes a universal extractant, but not all dyes are totally soluble in methanol or totally soluble in water. In that case, what we do? We take a 50 50 uh, solution of methanol and water and use as a co extractant for the dye. So, this kind of uh, you know uh, decision has to be taken by the analyst. There is no written rule that only one solvent is the best solvent. One has to do a permutation and combination strategy to find which solvent gives the best colorant. The main solvent extraction methods of course, still remain only two, one is the alcoholic extraction and the other one is the aqueous extraction. Alcoholic extraction, the extractant produced by the use of alcohol is called as the name suggests alcoholic extraction, where dry leaves are finely crushed through a grinder and then subjected to succulent extraction using methanol as a solvent, sometimes even ethanol. The cycle is repeated for 3 to 4 times at 60 degrees centigrade, then the, it is cooled, the extract uh, is filtered through the filter paper and the solvent is removed over the rotary evaporator. Aqueous extraction. Similarly, aqueous extraction irrespective of plant part were taken and poured in boiling water and then kept on for water bath for 60 degrees for about an hour and the extract of all the color was then seen in the water layer. Now, this is also filtered and then concentrated, then the same procedure is carried out, but nevertheless these are two main solvent methods of choice of solvent, alcoholic method and aqueous method for the extraction of dyes. So, what does this mean? It means that mostly either we involve alcoholic extraction by succulate or aqueous extraction by simply boiling the plant part in water over a water bath and these two methods are very popular for extraction of the natural dye. Aqueous extraction depending on the polarity of the compound and the polarity is decided by the fact that how many OH group or how many such groups you know polar groups are attached as oxochrome to the molecule. So, now aqueous extract of course, has been one of the most traditional conventional method and from time and again it has been a full proof method. But the only problem with aqueous method is that it requires long hours of extraction and some of the dyes which are heat sensitive may get decolorized or discolored. There are two different words decolorized meaning it may lose its color completely and discolored means from a bright nice color it may get converted to a very dull bad looking color. So, this is the basic problem that one has to face sometimes with some dyes when we are following the extraction process of the natural dyes. And you may recall that I had given you an example of sapan wood. Sapan wood shaving when it was subjected to aqueous extraction for a long period of time, the color first initially came was magenta because of the brazilin and when it was further heated, it became brazilian which was brown in color and this was an irreversible reaction. Hence, we lost that magenta color in the first experiment 
and that is why we switched over to ultrasonic wave extraction method which I will describe in a while in detail in some time. So, the traditional method of extraction for dye stuff from all other plant mentioned earlier where the plant material is added directly to the dye bath. This has been used for dyers for centuries and this is still being used in many dyer by many dyers in northeastern states in India. So, this is a traditional method by just aqueous extraction. However, this method had several disadvantages. Why I mentioned northeastern state of India? Because still there are pockets of various groups where natural dyeing is being practiced in Manipur, in Nagaland and in many other places such as Arunachal Pradesh and so on. The disadvantages of this method are that the plant material has to be extracted separately. It is not possible to carry out in modern textile fabrication machines because the pumps and the spinnerets will get choked. If you put the hard plant parts materials such as madder roots or barks of casea, amla and they will definitely extract but they will choke the machine. So, what I am trying to tell you that the practices that were carried out in the northeastern states were not one of the most efficient methods because they were boiling the ex extractant, they were trying to extract and they had put the fabric into the same bath. As a result, this can be done in a beaker or a big vessel steel vessel, but it cannot be done in dyeing machines where it will choke the movement of the machine. So, it was not a traditional method needed to be upgraded. Now, in many cases we found that combination of solvent also works very well. For industrial use, the best method is to provide extracts. Aqueous extracts are not specially favorable for dye plants such as parkia, alkanet, tulsi, where we have to use 50 percent of water and 50 percent of methanol for extraction. And I gave you this example a while ago that extraction with 50 50 percent of methanol water works for some plants, and so it is parkia alkanet and tulsi where we used this 50 50 percent solution because a, we found that we 100 percent water was not very good solvent for the extraction of the colorant. The reason being that flavonoids, anthraquinones and aglycones are poorly soluble in water and therefore, are extracted only partially in water. So, when we add methanol, then the other part of which is remains undissolved gets dissolved and then we can get the extractant in full amount. In the traditional method, the fabric, the plant and everything was put in one dye bath and it was just simply heated. Now, sometimes when the dye is not very soluble in water, there will be a problem that is that it will not solubilize in water. Then in such a case like for example, dye from parkia plant or dye from alkanet plant or dye from tulsi plant will face difficulty. Balsam flower is very tender you know and is in a state where it can only be dissolved in methanol and such a plant cannot show very good method of extraction by traditional method and therefore, methanol was added 50 percent. So, when you add a more polar solvent with a less polar solvent, then that combination creates a new polarity of the solvent and that becomes appropriate for certain plants. Some are totally soluble in methanol, some are partially soluble in methanol, 
and partially soluble in water. So, there it works very well. Then during our course of research, we came up with some innovative methods of extraction, because what we felt that there is a big gap which needs to be researched and there are many challenges related to extraction and efficient extraction of natural dye. So, in order to have efficient extraction of dye from the plant, it is very important to standardize and optimize this process. And we started using firstly Soxlit, then we tried supercritical fluid extraction, subcritical water extraction and sonicator method. These four methods are now being practiced, but we were one of the first ones to start using them. Sloxlet was being used by some other research groups as well, but supercritical fluid extraction and sonicator method was developed by us. Even supercritical, subcritical water extraction was not developed by us, we, but we used it. Innovative method of extraction of dyes became the necessity of the hour. Extraction and efficient extraction of dye from the plant material is important for standardization and optimization of natural dyes. And this we have to understand and to come to a conclusion that traditional methods are not the best methods. They cannot be used for commercialization of natural dyes. We have to come up with methods which are doable, which the industry can adapt, which is fast, which is cheap and which is efficient. So, all these important factors have to be kept in mind. And therefore, there are always possibilities of not being able to extract the entire amount of colorant if we stick to the traditional method. As it is, the plants have only 2 to 10 percent of dye content, very rarely 10 percent, it is mostly between 2 to 5 percent. Out of what also, if the dye is not extracted properly, it would mean that there is a loss of colorant in the waste material. And so, efficient method of dyeing has to be devised and that is where we started researching. And so, efficient method of modern extraction methods that were devised are Soxlate, supercritical fluid extraction subcritical water extraction and sonicator methods. So, these were the four methods which were popularly then on used by us or which have been popularly used in the extraction of natural dyes by others also now, of which chocolate is the most popular and why? Because every laboratory can afford a chocolate machine. And I will show you as we go along, how does a Soxlet machine look like? Because it is a very simple apparatus for extraction of say a couple of grams of dyes, it is possible to use that machine or an assembly I would call, it is not a dedicated machine per se, but it is a glass apparatus and it is quite cheap if we compare with the supercritical fluid extractant machine or subcritical water extraction machine or even sonicator. So, this is how the Soxlate extraction looks like. It has a condenser, it has a middle part is uh, having the column in which in the filter paper, the plant material is kept and then there is a big round bottom flask immersed in the heating mantle. There is water circulated. So, all the solvent that comes through this 
from the bottom percolates through the filter paper part and then the extractant is collected again back in the lower flask. And when such 5 to 6 cycles are run, all the colored material is efficiently transferred and then the solvent can be removed and the extract can be made available. Soxalate extraction as you saw in the previous slide, there is a round bottom flask, then there is a vessel where the plant material is wrapped up in filter paper and this and there is a distillation head where the distillation takes place and our most almost 8 hours the cycle goes on till all the color actually is extracted and collected in the round bottom flask below. The round bottom flask is heated from beneath by the heating mantle. When a compound of low solubility needs to be extracted from a solid mixture, a soxalate extraction can be carried out. So, that means solid plant material can be wrapped up and with the help of appropriate solvent, the solid extract can be solidified and prevented in the wrapped paper and appropriate solvent can help the dye to be extracted completely. The technique places a specialized piece of glassware in which a flask and a condenser is there. So, it is a small apparatus, glass apparatus, but a very efficient one because the extractant is done. The only drawback about soxalate is that it takes about 6 to 8 hours to complete 3 cycles and in almost 3 cycles the most of the colorant is extracted because it is a repeated process where the same solvent is running down the filter paper again and again and that is how it is being extracted. The reflexing solvent repeatedly washes the solid extracting material which is the desired compound which is wrapped in the filter paper into the flask. Soxalate extraction was carried out for colorant extraction. In this work dried plant parts were used into thistle of the soxalate extractor and methanol was used as a solvent. Temperature of the instrument was maintained well under the boiling point of the solvent which is methanol. Several cycles of solvent were run so as to extract all the compounds from the plant parts, all the colored compounds. The choice of solvent in the case of soxalate is methanol and by repeated cycles at, as it is not possible to extract the entire amount of colorant in just one cycle. Therefore, it requires almost 4 to 8 hours for the solvent to go on refluxing and then condensing and every time the solvent is condensing, it is washing through the filter paper and back into the round bottom flask. So, the colorant is getting intensified in the round bottom flask and then at the end the solvent is evaporated. Now, supercritical extractor. Now, this is something where I would like to spend a bit of time because it is one of a very unique modern extracting plant where supercritical extractors, this is how it looks like, I just showed you the picture. And there is also liquefied carbon dioxide which acts popularly as the extractant in the extraction of the colorant. Sometimes some entrainers such as ethyl acetate are added in small quantities to facilitate the solubility of the colorant. Now, because of the rarefaction of carbon dioxide and liquid fraction of carbon dioxide, it adds on property to the liquid carbon dioxide to be a good solvent. So, we know that carbon dioxide is a gas. 
Now, when it is compressed, it becomes liquefied and when it becomes a liquefied carbon dioxide, it becomes a good solvent to dissolve some of these colorants. Now, this is a new concept altogether. Why? Because you have always known carbon dioxide as gas. When gases can be compressed and it at a particular point of temperature, which is called critical temperature and pressure, critical pressure, then gases can be converted into liquid. Now, this is the critical temperature and pressure at which the gaseous material can be liquefied. Now, it is then rarefied. Again, the release of the pressure can bring them back to the gaseous state. So, thus the fundamental that adapted is what is adapted for supercritical extractor. I will show you in this diagram that there is an extractor, there is a heat exchanger, there is a pump and the gaseous carbon dioxide, there is an extractor, there is a heat exchanger, there is a pump and there is a condenser where liquid carbon dioxide can be compressed from the gaseous and then there is a separator, there is a regulation valve and heat exchanger. So, this is the you know flow diagram of the machine supercritical carbon dioxide extractor and it works at critical temperature and critical pressure. So, supercritical extractor, here is a regulation valve, there is a heat exchanger, there is a separator, there is a gas exchange and then there is a condenser which passes liquid carbon dioxide and through the extractant, it then comes back to the carbon dioxide into the system. So, you see that all the carbon dioxide is liquefied, rarefied, liquefied, rarefied and it is recycled, nothing is lost. There is very minimal loss of carbon dioxide, but nevertheless it acts as a solvent very efficiently. What it does in the liquefied state? It takes away the colorant from the plant material and then when it is rarefied, it emits out the plant material extractant. So, therefore, the carbon dioxide in the gaseous state is recycled and that plant extractant is collected. At different temperatures and pressures, when the supercritical extractor is set, it can then be very befitting for extracting steroids from the plants. Another parameter can be set up where only terpenoids can be extracted from the same plant material which is fed into the supercritical extractor, many value addition products can be extracted by simply changing the parameter of the critical temperature and pressure and by using in different entrainers with the carbon dioxide gas. Now, this is almost like a magic machine that from the same plant material which has steroids, terpenoids, colorants and many other chemical compounds. If you change the temperature, critical temperature and pressure and set at one particular uh, parameter, then only one specific compound is dissolved in liquefied carbon dioxide and that is the beauty of this reaction or this machine. And liquefied carbon dioxide is not wasted, it is fully recovered because it is only being compressed into liquefied carbon dioxide and then rarefied into carbon dioxide gas. And continuously the machine of course, is expensive, it is a one time expense, but it is worth the expense because it is uh, you know very efficient in terms of its extraction process. We used it for the first time. You would not believe, but it is true that eucalyptus bark, which normally in aqueous solution would give a brown solution 
because barks are full of tannins, I could never find any yellow colored dye in that aqueous solution or aqueous extraction. But when we carried out supercritical extraction process, it was to our amazement that only specifically flavonoid and that too canary yellow colored flavonoid were extracted in good quantity, in full quantity as much it was present. And the dyeing effect of that pure dye was far more effective, efficient than the bark aqueous bark solution. So, what I am trying to draw your attention is that supercritical extractor is one of the best methods for doing extraction of any such plant. Then we also tried to get the green color from tulsi leaves because a customer wanted a good quantity of tulsi extraction and we were trying to provide that, but by aqueous extraction we were not very successful. So, what we tried to do? We tried to explore this once again supercritical extractor, although we did not have it in our own laboratory. I had to take help from another laboratory and on payment basis they did extraction for us for both eucalyptus bark as well as tulsi leaves. And the tulsi leaf extract that we got from supercritical extracting machine was far having dye content more and that is the reason why we went ahead and uh, you know extracted more and more of tulsi leaves to supply to that particular person. So, supercritical fluid extraction we abbreviate it as SCFE. Supercritical fluid extraction is a two step process which uses a dense gas as a solvent usually carbon dioxide above its critical temperature that is 31 degrees centigrade and critical pressure that is 74 bar for extraction. The natural products is powdered and charged into the extractor. Carbon dioxide is fed to the extractor through a high pressure pump that is working at 100 to 350 bars. So, it is under big pressure. The extract charged carbon dioxide is sent to the separator which is at a pressure of 60 to 120 bar via a pressure reduction vol valve. At reduced temperature and pressure conditions, the extract precipitates out in the separator. The extract free from carbon dioxide stream is introduced several times for effective extraction of all the dye material from the natural product. And as I told you that the beauty of this supercritical fluid extractor is that you change the parameter above the critical temperature and pressure of carbon dioxide at a different temperature and pressure. One can get steroids, one can get flavonoids, one can get uh, uh, terpenoids and even some flavored compounds can be extracted and actually it is being used mainly for flavors and perfumes extraction. Why is SCFE is superior? Why SCFE is superior over traditional solvent extraction of natural dyes? It is one of the best method and is nothing is as nothing is wasted. From the same plant material various other important chemicals can also be extracted after the extraction of the dye and at a particular parameter which is the critical temperature and pressure above the critical temperature and pressure which when these temperatures are altered different materials will come out differently. So, just by manipulating the critical temperature and pressure one can get different 
types of compounds different na differently natured compounds from the same plant material. In the soxalate extraction we always get a crude mixture, but in the case of supercritical fluid extraction the purity of the compound is assured. Finally, it uses a clean, safe, inexpensive, non-inflammable, non-toxic, environmentally friendly, non-polluting solvent which is carbon dioxide. All other solvents that are used in soxalate extraction be it methylone, be it acetone, be it ethyl acetate or any other aromatic solvent are always considered to be non-eco friendly and therefore, this particular method has certainly much superior as compared to soxalate or aqueous or solvent extraction methods. Now, let us move on to a subcritical water extractor. This is the layout of the plant that looks it is also expensive like SEFE, but it is it has its own advantages. Subcritical water extractor, it has a pump that is controlling the temperature and then it also has an exit through which the extraction takes place. There is a feed pump then into the extractor there is a very specialized kind of arrangement where superheated water can be passed through the extractant. Normally, water has a temperature of boiling at 100 degrees. It is the heating which facilitates the temperature of the pumped water to be kept above 100 degrees and this gaseous water is a very good extractant. Between the gaseous and the liquid phases of water, it is a good extractant and that is what works for some of the plants. Subcritical water extraction is performed with some plants to extract natural colorants. It is not one of the most popular methods. This was one of the methods that was practiced for a few plants. The mechanism is that the water is purged with nitrogen to remove dissolved oxygen prior to extraction. The deoxygenated water is pumped is used as a pump program for a constant flow of 1 to 3 ml per minute. The extraction is carried out in efficient manner. So, this is actually also based on making liquefied water into gaseous phase and then cooling it again to get liquid. So, that is how it is made to be a good extraction, because at ordinary temperature water may not be always the choice of solvent. So, it has to be that there has to be a temperature at which it can dissolve better than the ordinary water. And so, when deoxygenated water is used in subcritical water extraction and in the gaseous phase it extracts better than in the liquid state. Now, this is one of the methods that we developed of course, it was more accidental than a planned research, but nevertheless we had a sonicator in the laboratory and we used it for sapan wood. If you remember this is the third time I am mentioning sapan wood extraction in aqueous water was a and was an utter failure. And in that surge to look for a proper method for extraction of the magenta color from the wood lumen of sapan wood, we looked at sonicator method. The sonicator is a machine which uses as the name suggests ultrasound energy and the ultrasound energy of 20 kilohertz frequency at a voltage of 50 can create agitation which can be very good for extracting the colorant from some of the plant material. Especially 
if the plant material is a little more sensitive then or if it is not extracting by normal methods fully. Accidental new invention that we just wanted to see this because we were facing difficulty with the extraction of sapan wood by conventional water extraction and what would happen? The sapan wood shavings when they were heated for a prolonged time in water would instead of giving bright magenta extract would get converted into a dull brown extract. Therefore, it was getting discolored because of prolonged heating and oxidation. So, we looked at the ultrasound assisted extraction that is UAE. Ultrasound assisted extraction was carried out by mixing dried and ground sample in methanol or any other solvent in a flask which was then placed in the ultrasonic bath for 30 minutes. Actually, it did not require even 30 minutes or even less than that. At the beginning, the temperature of the extraction was between 20 to 40 degrees that is almost like room temperature and after 30 minutes that became and because there is a localized heat that is generated, the extraction was repeated for 2 th to 3 times and the extract was collected and evaporated on the rotary evaporator. Ultrasonication assisted extraction ideally 20 grams of flour were mixed with 50 ml of each solvent like one can use methanol or ethanol or ethyl acetate or acetone and sometimes even water in 100 ml on a conical flask and just place it in the sonicator bath. After th 30 minutes the extract is in your hand. The ultrasound chamber that is the machine that I should use was the Julabo machine and the model was USR3 having a frequency of 20 kilohertz using different sonic power between 100 to 500 watts. For different time in the intervals that is 15 minutes to even 2 hours was used, but that is an extreme case mostly 15 to 30 minutes were ideal for extraction of colorant. The power level was set at a maximum level of 9 and the temperature during that 1 to 2 hour extraction period was stabilized and it was almost at 25 to 30 degrees during the extraction which is an ambient temperature which is at the room temperature almost. For indirect sanitation the sample the conical flask was uh, immersed in an ultrasound chamber at half height of the solution of the flask operating at 20 kilohertz. The temperature was controlled and maintained at below 30 degrees by periodically replacing in the water in the bath with cold water and when that is if it is cold it is added then the temperature can be maintained because otherwise it continues using this ultrasound energy the water also gets heated up which is outside the flask. The flask was taken out cool to room temperature by water and then the extract was available in hand. So, the process of extra extraction by ultrasonic ultrasound assisted extraction, the flower extract were filtered through the Wattman paper 42 filter paper and the solution was collected. The residue was taken back and extracted again under the same conditions. The extracts of twice extraction were mixed. The ultrasound power actually delivered to the extracting liquid by the sonic bath and was determined by the calorimetric color method. That means that from one extraction to the next extraction it was possible to see the color change and the intensifying of the color. This suggests that ultrasonication assisted extraction process is 
more selective than the conventional one and it is more effective also. It is also very good for temperature sensitive substrates. As I told you that accidental use of sonicator with the softened wood material helped us to extract the colorant from supper wood lumen and the which we had failed in the aqueous condition. Let us to this important use of ultrasound otherwise ultrasound was not used for this purpose earlier. Now, because it was available in the laboratory we could use it so easily. The energy consumption is much lower in the case of ultrasound extraction. The efficiency of the extraction is much higher and not only that the temperature consumed is much less and the cost of the machine is also optimal. It is not as high as supercritical fluid extractor or subcritical water extractor. It is not very expensive machine and therefore, it is recommended in all laboratories just like Soxlet assembly one should have a sonicator for the extraction of colorants. This is an affordable machine, but if one compares with Soxlet machine this extracting machine is much efficient. It can be done directly into the bath or it can be done I mean putting in a conical flask and only utilizing the agitation that is created by the water in the sonicator bath. The ultrasound waves do all the miracle. So, both the ways one can do it, one can have a choice for solvent, use any of these solvents like methanol, ethanol, ethyl acetate, acetone or even water. So, it has a lot of flexibility where one can use these solvents and we can even use water. In Soxlet, we can use, we have the same flexibility, but mostly lower boiling solvents are used and water is rarely used. But here in Sonicator, because we are not heating it, it is only the heat of the sound wave that is creating the micro bubble to form and when the micro bubble emerge, then they kind of release heat which is localized heat and that is good enough to extract the colorant from the system. So, you see that this is most effective at the same time it is not using any heating device. Therefore, it is energy saving. It uses, I mean it can extract within 15 minutes to 30 minutes. If we compare Soxlet which requires almost 6 to 8 hours. So, obviously, in terms of time also it is time saving. Supercritical fluid extractant gives only pure extract. So, that is where there is an advantage. If there is a need for pure extract, one should go for supercritical fluid extraction. One can even you know get it done from places where these machines are available and they can do this job for you on payment basis. But more importantly, what is important is that, that these machines have now been popularly used for dye extraction. Unlike the earlier time when it was only water aqueous extraction which was popularly used, it is now that people are using sonicator, supercritical fluid extractor and subcritical water extractor apart from Soxlet. So, conventional a extraction method is kind of dying off and now the more important methods that are being practiced for extraction, efficient extraction of colorant are Soxlet, Sonicator, Supercritical Fluid Extractor, 
and subcritical water extractor. People are now even looking for even better methods and therefore, we are now recommending that it still requires more research. We can find even better methods because there is always an opportunity to find methods which will be more effective and therefore, we can recommend that all the methods that are told today to you in this lecture. Apart from that newer methods, there is always an opportunity for newer methods to come up. This is not the end of the story. The extraction process can go on and better methods can be developed, better solvents can be developed and the whole idea is that how to get best of the extraction, how to get most of the colorant out from the plant so that it is called the most effective method of extraction. So, to conclude efficient extraction of the colorant is a challenge and hence several methods have been developed. Not all methods are applicable in each case. From plant to plant, from part to part the extraction method may need to be chosen so that effective extraction of colorant is achieved. So, the main idea is the effective extraction of the colorant. Soxalate is good for roots, barks, leaves which require methanol as solvent. Supercritical fluid extraction is good for flavonoids which get masked with tannins from barks. Subcritical water extraction is recommended for saffron. Sonicator is meant for heat sensitive wood lumen and many other such heat sensitive natural dye plant parts. So, with this we have come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.